Good evening, family, and welcome, welcome to another Thinking Tanks Tuesdays. So today there's a lot which is happening, as you all know, in South African news, what's ha been happening today, what's been trending, what's been making the headlines. Hmm. So for today, let's get right on it. For today's headlines on our Thinking Tanks Tuesdays, we are looking at our former president, uh, Zuma, Jacob Zuma, which has been sentenced to 15 months in jail. And then we look at the SWAT uproar. There's something happening in Swatini, so we look at it as well. We look at the State Capture Commission uh, into Zizi Court was testimony because apparently some people are so lucky they just given millions of rents by their friends just for nothing. So that's Zizi Court on State Capture Commission. And bad news for all of us, we are on level four lockdown in South Africa for the next 14 days. So that's gonna be our headlines for today on Thinking Things Tuesday with me, Tosa Chick. So in front of me already, I've got the Jacob Zuma sentence to 15 months in prison. And then this is from, as you will see, every news, whether online, everywhere, social media, it's been going crazy after the announcement of the sentencing. So in front of me, I've got the South African, which I think it's an online newspaper. Um, I'm not sure. It was This was written 10 hours ago by Tom Head. It says here, yeah, Jacob Zuma sentenced to 15 months in prison. Um, it says, well, 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 Concord hasn't just thrown the book at Jacob Zuma on Tuesday. They've chucked the whole bloody library at him. In an outstanding moment of judicial bravery, the bench agreed that the former president should serve a total of 15 months in prison, handing down an unsuspended sentence. So that was the headlines today, as I told you. <laughs> South Africa has been making headlines today. It says, Jacob Zuma given a prison sentence. Of course, you are likely to see a whole lot of shenanigans over the next few days. But the weight of this judgment is enormous. The highest court in the land has sentenced Mshalozi to spend over a year behind bars. If all goes to plan, Jay-Z could be forced to arrested and processed by law enforcement officials today now nah, I'm not sure that one because I know he's got five days to t to go to the nearest police station and hand himself in so not today Concord drops into Mshalozi judge Kambe Kambepe went to town on Jacob Zuma explaining why she was ditching out a significant punishment she called his behavior in she called his behavior intolerable and slammed the one time head of state for repeatedly attacking the judiciary. Unfounded attacks on the courts cannot be met with impunity. Zuma's attacks on the judiciary are not substanti substantiated and are not tolerable in our democratic dispensation. The majority finds itself with little choice but to send a message that this type of reluctance and defiance is unlawful and will be punished. This case is exceptional, not in that Zuma is being treated exceptionally, but that the matrix of factors requires an exceptional sanction. Unfunded attacks on the courts cannot be made with impunity. Zuma's attacks on the judiciary are not substantiated and are not tolerable in, all, in our democratic dispensation. The majority judgment holds that the, Zuma, that the Zuma is no ordinary litigant, but a political figure with who holds great power and who could instigate others to disregard the rule of law. The Concord has in the past said there is a heightened responsibility on those who once held the highest office in the country to uphold the rule of law. And that's what we have from the, what do you call this newspaper, from the South African on the sentencing of Jacob Zuma to 15 months in prison. So, as I said, that has been making the headlines in the news today, the sentencing, the 
and the friends speaking out what they think if it threatens of war by zuma supporters like colony house will come to 702 okay this is the one which i want zuma supporters and then after the news broke down so there were a lot of news uh, there were a lot of uh, talks when it comes to zuma camp and so on what they will be doing they will be doing next and so on so here is the one of zuma's greatest supporters as we all know so in front of me we've got uh the sun the cape times it says zuma supporters say prison sentence unacceptable that's nine hours ago Charlie. it's this was written in durban with the constitutional court uh having sentenced former president jacob zuma to 15 months imprisonment for his content of the apex court his supporters have slammed the court's decision as unacceptable. This sentencing follows Zuma's refusal to appear before the Commission of Inquiry into allegations of state capture despite being ordered to do so by the Constitutional Court. One of the former head of state supporters has wasted little time in slamming the court's decision. With Zuma's longtime supporter and close ally Carl Nihais being among the first to react to the news of the court's decision, the imprisonment of President Jacob Zuma is totally unacceptable. In fact, it is an utter outrage. Now it is our revolutionary democratic right and duty to register our outrage and resistance to this. In no uncertain terms, and we will 100% behind Mshalozi, hands of Mshalozi. He has said, Professor Richard Carl Land, political analyst and public law professor from the University of Cape Town, said that the Corn Court's ruling was a sad but proud moment for SA's democracy. No one shall take pleasure in the sight of a former president going to jail. By the strength of the rule of law and the independence of courts is something wonderful to behold, Carl Land said it. Herman Mashaba, Action SA leader, said that the court's judgment was a victory for the rule of law in South Africa. It is clear for all to see that Jacob Zuma's attempts to ignore, undermine and destroy the rule of law will not be tolerated in our democratic society. Nobody is above the law. This is indeed a victory for all South Africans that have become hurtful, <laughs> those who have looted our country with impunity. Finally, Jacob Zuma will find himself where he belongs, behind bars, Mashaba said. <laughs> okay, so this was written by Sam Kelo, and it's Sam, Sam Kelo, okay, S-A-M-K-L-O dot M-T-H-A-L-I at I-N-L dot co dot za. I don't know how to say that. So that was the news now of how Zuma supporters feel after the announcement of the sentencing. So it's a mixture of mixed feelings among different camps. Others are celebrating that the law at least took its uh, firm action when it comes to curbing our former president and trying to show that nobody's above the law. So we'll see what will happen in the next few days going to the five days which our former president is supposed to hand himself in. So if he doesn't do that, so the, then the police minister will have to jump in and arrest him. But we'll see if that will happen. Surely he'll just go to jail without missing anybody's feelings. There's nothing to fight for now, just for him to just fall on his sword and just do the right thing. That's all that's left of him. So that's when we know South Africa must resist imprisonment of Jacob Zuma, MKMA is Carl Nihais, we've gone that one already. And the ANC, <laughs> on the ANC side, I can't really say how they do the ANC feel with the whole sentencing of the former president and ANC member because the ANC spokesperson did speak, but in a way they are for the constitution 
at the same time uh the former president is an anc member so the nc apparently will meet over the weekend and then only after that they, they will have something to say to the media but at the present moment they still they still not really sure what to say to the media that's all i can say because the, when the spokesperson of the ANC was speaking, they were just focusing on the fact that they are happy that the constitution of South Africa is the one which gets to be above everybody. So which means that nobody's above the law. That's all they were saying. Anyway, let's move to our next story, which is about the SWAT and what is happening in SWAT at the present moment. As I said, there seemed to be an uproar or some sort of protest happening. Okay, it's more to make the rights that other criminals are afford money. Ugh. So, okay, SWAT is SWAT in unrest. King SWAT allegedly flees amid chaotic protest. Here we go. This is 14 hours ago, and again, this is by the South African. It's a uh, it was written by Tabo Aloyi 14 hours ago. It says, Eswati in unrest, King Swati allegedly flees amid chaotic protest. Mm -hmm. Africa is happening. So according to various media reports, including SAPC News, Matapa, a town in central Eswati, has become the scene of chaos over the past several days. Residents have apparently gone manic setting fire to shops and damaging other infrastructure. The circumstances behind the unrest remain unclear at this point. However, some reports suggest that citizens are protesting over political reform and want an end to monarchical rule. The Economic Freedom Fighters EFF in Eswatin has reacted to the ongoing violence and called for the international community to intervene. Thousands and thousands of Swazi citizens are out in the streets protesting for a new democratic government that is for the people by the people. We plead with the international community not to turn a blind eye. We need you more than before, the party said on social media. Why exactly are the protesters in Eswatini? Lack of democracy in Eswatini, which was previously called Swaziland, has long been an issue plaguing the kingdom. King Swati has absolute power, including in senior appointments like the prime minister, cabinet ministers, and members of the judiciary. In Eswatini, political parties are not allowed to take part in elections, as per legislation that was introduced in 2005, while groups advocating for democracy have also been outlawed. It, is, it isn't clear exactly what started the unrest. However, residents recently gathered in a village in the kingdom's Manzini district to demand the right to vote for their own prime minister. By extension, they want King Swati to lift the ban on political parties and are demanding to have their voices heard on the, on the ballot paper. King Swat is known for lavish lifestyle, which is a stark contrast of the living conditions of his people, many of whom are poor. He was appointed king, appointed king back in 1986 when he was just 18 years old. So that's what's happening in Eswatini, sir. We'll see how those, those news go as time goes on. At the present moment, we can't really say what's happening in the SWAT team so we'll just keep that going i was just surprised that there's an eff uh, party in the SWAT team so julius malima is busy apparently eff is the one now which is calling for the international community to take note of what is happening in the SWAT team and that's the eff from the SWAT team i was i didn't know if we have an eff party there so Julius, you are working, bro. And our next news now, it's the State Capture Commission on Zizi Kotwa, how that guy was just given millions of rands just for, just for having people with money. Just, you know, when you know people which have money and they can just give you money because they know you. So let's just, just check on Zizi Kotwa. 
Oh gosh, state. <laughs> state capture. Yeah, it's so cold in Cape Town, people. It's been cold for this past a few days. I must say, it's not cool. Winter, winter is here, and we are on level four in South Africa. Okay, work. I'm trying to get to that one of Zizi Godwa. I can't seem to be get it. I'm getting all the others in front of me. Stay capture. Let's see. I think I should have said Zizi Godwa. Let's see what we find on this court. Oh, this is court that denies is compromised while owing a 100 million to friend implicated in fraud corruption. Remember, I said some people are just lucky, they just get money because just this is uh this is a day ago let's see this uh in front of me i've got the so so wet and <laughs> yeah, well, almost say so wet and ten. <laughs> english yeah. in front of me i've got the so wet and live and it says south africa the spent uh, 890000 on a Jeep after getting loan from businessmen. Mm. Despite facing financial difficulties at the time, State Capture Inquiry hears this, is, this was written on the 28th of June 2021 at 1414 by Mawande uh, Masham Alala, political journalist. So wet and life. It says here ANC National Executive Committee NEC member and Deputy Minister Zizi Koda has defended his controversial relationship with businessman Jehan Mackay. Koda appeared at the state capture inquiry on Monday to be grilled about payments made to him by Mackay totaling close to two million. According to God, McKay was a friend who came to his assistance when he was facing financial difficulties during his stint as ANC national spokesperson. This included a one million payment, one million rand payment to Godwa, eight hundred and ninety thousand of which he uses to buy a Jeep vehicle. Koda claimed payments he received from Mackay were transactions between friends and not kickbacks to buy his influence and proximity to power. In any event, Koda charged there was in any event, Koda charged there was no chance he was in a position to help advance Mackay's business interests as he did not work for government at the time. Okay. However, he told the inquiry he accepted the perception that accepting payments from friends may create the wrong impression when one had proximity to the levers of power. Koda was grilled about whether he would be able to repay the loan immediately and in full should Mackay demand the money. I will negotiate new terms with him, said Koda. He knows he will not get one million immediately. Evidence leader Matthew Chas Carlson SC said it was puzzling for Goda to claim the one million payment was a personal loan to himself when it was reflected as ANC donation in a TSS, one of my case businesses bank statement. Yeah. My understanding is that the loan I have is with Mr. Mackay, said Godwa. Charles Colson said, I know what your understanding is, but the TSS bank statement reflects this payment of a one million as a donation to the ANC. That is incorrect. Goda responded, yes, that is incorrect. The inquiry was also not buying Goda's version that he was receiving payments from Mackay because he was having financial difficulties, but so fit to buy a vehicle costing close to a one million. 
if you were in financial difficulties in april 2015 why did you spend 800 890 000 on a car as charles carlson that is a debate whether to spend 10,000 or 20,000 i do not think is a matter i can justify perhaps i should have thought of buying a smaller car for 20,000 like a corolla instead of a bigger car said god <laughs> these people so that's what he said he didn't think that seeing that he was in financial difficulty he could have went a little bit lower when he went he wanted a car so why would you want to go lower when you know a friend can get you that car you want even if you're in financial difficulties so yeah that's what Zizi Koda said in the state capture commission about his friendship with the allegedly corrupt person so that's what ANC does for you they always mix and mingle with people which got bad reputation but then they want to be seen as being clean so it doesn't make sense why would you be involved with people with shady deals but then you want to be seen as an angel anyway next one the last story for tonight is i don't want to drag this there's still more to come next week maybe we'll get better understanding on certain stories now let's move to our level four lockdown so i'm not sure when was this we had another family meeting where we were told we're on level four lockdown there's no more alcohol there's restrictions of moving from one uh, province to the next we are back on serious lockdown yes and the schools are closed they closed sooner than they should have because of this uh, lockdown and we are on lockdown level four for 14 days i'm just trying to see what i can find of in front of me which can summarize the whole level four lockdown so let's see level so as we all know i think the last time i checked it was Gauteng was leading with the COVID cases level four. Uh, level four lockdown South Africa. So I think this was that two days ago. I don't really learning alcohol banning, then the school closes South African. Okay, let's take this one. I think it's better. So this was two days ago. The alcohol ban in school closes level as South Africa moves to level four lockdown. This is ooh, this is too much happening here. Staff writer, this was the 27th of June, 2021. So I think this is an online newspaper, but I'm not sure which is the name. There's so many adverts in it. Okay, so as President Cyril Ramaphosa has announced that South Africa will move to an adjusted lockdown level 4 with a total ban on the sale of alcohol and gatherings. In a national address on Sunday, so the family meeting was on Sunday, 27 June, Ramaphosa announced that the COVID-19 lockdown level of the country will be increased due to the sharp increase in daily infections. The decision comes after meeting, uh, meetings of the National Coronavirus Command Council, NCCC, and health experts over the weekend. Ramaphosa said the Ministerial Advisory Committee, MAC has, MAC, has said the country's measures to date were not sufficient to handle the more transmissible Delta variant of the coronavirus which he said had now been detected in five provinces. The provinces affected included the Free State, Eastern Cape, Gauteng, Western Cape, and KwaZulu-Natal. Ramaphosa said the new variant was rapidly replacing the beta variant, the mutation that was first detected in South Africa and that has been the dominant variant in the country. The rapid spread of this variant is extremely serious, Ramaphosa stated. Even if, it is, if, even if it is not more severe, the rate at which people are infected could lead to many more people becoming ill and requiring treatment at the same time. He added there was rising evidence that people that were previously infected with the beta variant did not have full protection against the delta variant and could be reinfected. Oh my God. 
Ramaphosa said the seven-day average of new cases has surpassed the peak of the first wave and was approaching the peak of the second wave. Ramaphosa warned that all indications are that the third wave will be worse than the previous waves and last longer. <laughs> he added that healthcare facilities were being overwhelmed by the third wave. In several provinces, our health facilities are stretched to their limits. Private facilities are also buckling under the strain, Ramaphosa stated. Due to the surge in cases, lockdown restrictions across the country will be tightened to reduce person-to-person -person contact. The reverse measures for level 4 included the following. The hours of curfew will now be from 9 o'clock till 4 o'clock in the morning. All non-essential establishments must close by 8 o'clock. All indoor and outdoor gatherings, including religious, social, political and cultural gatherings, are now prohibited. The sale of alcohol for off-site and on-site consumption is finished. <laughs> so, schools will be closed starting from Wednesday up until Friday. Contact, class, contact classes at tertiary institutions will stop from Wednesday. Residents will remain open. Traveling to and from Houting for leisure is done done. So that's all the adjustments with the new level for lockdown so those are all what we can do and we can't do so there's a lot which we can't do again and we, also, we all know that alcohol is one of the the enemies when it comes to levels locking down and so on when it comes to the virus so when and yes i'm surprised this time around they didn't touch the smoking people because last time it was cigarettes and alcohol so at least people will go back to making their home brewed concussions again for the next 14 days or maybe some people got some stack alcohol in their cellars who knows but anyway without wasting any time family that was our news on thinking things tuesday this week we had uh former president jacob zuma being sentenced to 15 months in jail we had the swati swazi swati land swati ni unrest sorry it was swaziland before but now it's called swat swatini unrest we've got the state capture commission with the zizi kodwa testimony how he was given millions of money just and then how he bought a car which was almost a million rand but he didn't he was in a financial difficulties and then also our level four lockdown in south africa i don't think i'm gonna go any further than this today i think we are done thank you thank you family for all the love and support on the channel and please don't forget to subscribe comment and recommend the channel to your friends family anybody which might be interested and thank you thank you for all the love and till next week bye Hi family, before we forget, we've got more news. Apparently there was a building, international news, international news before we could forget. Apparently this week there was a building in America, uh, in Florida, Condo building collapse. A 12-story building in Surfside, just north of Miami Beach, partially collapsed, leaving at least one dead and 10 injured. Wait, wait, so Shell says because more were un unaccounted for. Let's see if it's the story which I'm looking for. Yes, this is the 24th of June 2021, but the news are being progressing as we go on. This was on the 24th, by, by now I think there's already like 12, 10 deaths reported, and most people still unaccounted. It says here. Yeah. By, okay, this is from an international news. Okay, it's a chaplain tower south, the 12 story building in Florida that partially collapsed Thursday had been a beachside resident for 40 years. The building at 18 at 8777 Collins Avenue, just north of Miami Beach, 
was built in 1981, Surfside Commissioner Elena Swalsha said the building was undergoing inspection for its recertification. At least one person is dead and 10 injured. Officials say that nearly 100 people unaccounted for as of Thursday afternoon. Slide or drag left and right on the... Oh, sorry, <laughs> that's the instructions now for the pictures. So that's what is happening in America. I'm trying to find the latest if I can because this was on the 24th and by then there was not much news but that was that's the headlines and what's happening in America. There's a building, a 12-story building which collapsed and people really are, are missing and some already passed away. So that's the dangers of not doing inspections on building or just leaving buildings to just fall apart until the last minute. A 12 story building just collapsed and people were really injured people. It's serious. I'm trying to imagine how many buildings here in South Africa which are on the last verge. They're just waiting for that nail on the coffin before people will be hurt and injured. Anyway, that's the uh, headlines when it comes to international news. It's the collapsed building in Florida. And there hasn't been really rescued. More than 200 rescued personnel are currently working on the massive pile. Okay, this is two hours ago. Let's get this one. I think it will give us more information, recent information on what's happening. Okay, this is from Yahoo News. <laughs> Rescuers at the collapsed Florida condo are enduring grueling work as debris falls off the building. If you people, if you could see the pictures, it's horrible. It's horrific. Yeah. So I don't know what happened now. What am I here? Okay. I think the page just redirected us somewhere else. We didn't want to go. That's all the reports we should get. Like it's serious. Okay. Let's see what we have here. It's the news are from Yahoo. It says there have been no new fatalities confirmed in the Florida condo collapse official said Tuesday. Search and rescue teams are enduring grueling work at the site where debris has fallen off. What's left of the building said the officials. As of Tuesday, there were still 11 confirmed deaths in last week's collapse with more than 150 people unaccounted for. Visiting Inside Homepage for more stories, search and rescue teams are enduring a grueling work at the site of the Florida condo collapse where a debris has fallen off was what's left of the building near the rescue efforts, officials said Tuesday. More than 200 rescue personnel are currently working on the massive pile of rubble at the site of the partly collapsed Chaplin Towers south in Southside, Miami. Dade County Mayor Daniela Lavina Cava said during a press briefing, they are working throughout inclement weather. They are working as hard as they ever have, Cava said. They are able to make headway even in the face of all of those obstacles. Okay, uh, to the, uh, as of Tuesday, there are still 11 confirmed deaths in last week's collapse with more than 150 people unaccounted for. No new fatalities were reported Tuesday. We are truly the best in the world conducting this search and rescue efforts. So that's what's happening. A building collapsed and then uh, they're still trying to find any survivors or any body which maybe could be just be buried. So that's what has been happening in America is trying to find any survivors under those uh, debris of that collapsed building. 
so yeah family that's all we have for today hopefully you will have a wonderful evening and thank you very much again for joining this channel till we meet again next week bye bye